Welcome to this predictive paper from OnMaths. This paper represents the best guess for the upcoming exams. Please use this paper in addition to your other revision. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site. OnMaths is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions, and mini-mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing. So if we imagine we've got the um, 25 meter pipe here, and we've got the uh, 35 meter pipe here. The question is basically asking us what can we cut all these um, pipes into, and they all have to be the same length, um, that will fit with the 25 meter and the 35 meter. And essentially what this question is asking is, what is the highest common factor of 25 and 35? So to find the highest common factor, what we do is we just find the factors of 25, which is 1 and 25 and 5 and 5, and the factors of 35, which will be uh, 1 and 35 and 5 and 7. And the highest common factor is the number in both lists, the highest number in both lists, so it's 5. So what we can do is we can cut all of these um, pipes into 5 metre pipes. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, not to scale, <laughs> and then 7 of these, so 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and so there's 7 in total. So each of these are 5 metre long. And there's no wastage, and that's the longest we can we can make the pipes for there to be no wastage at all. So my answer is five meters. So we've got to first of all work out how many parts there are all together. So we're told that the ratio of red, yellow, and green is three to two to four. So to work out how many parts there are all together, we do three plus two plus four, which is nine parts. So there's nine equal piles of sweets. Okay. But to work out what one part or one pile of sweets is worth, we're going to get the 99 sweets and divide it by the amount of piles, and that's going to be 11. So one part is worth 11 sweets. We're asked to find out how many yellow sweets, and yellow is the middle one, so it's going to be the two. So yellow has two piles of 11 sweets. 2 times 11 is going to be 22, so it's going to be 22 sweets. So in this question, we basically need to add the 2 and 3 quarters and the 2 and 2 fifths. So we're going to do 2 and 3 quarters plus 2 and 2 fifths. Now, if I just rewrite this, 2 and 3 quarters can be written as 2 plus 3 quarters plus 2 plus 2 and a fifth, or 2 fifths. So we can add the two twos together to make four. And then all we need to do is add the three quarters and the two fifths. So when you add uh, two numbers with different denominators, what we need to do is get the common denominators. And we do that by just quickly writing out the four and the five times table and seeing what the first number in both the times tables is. 16, 20, and 5, 10. 15, 20, so that's 20. So we need to get the um, bottoms of the fractions to 20. Now for 3 quarters, to get the bottom to equal 20, we need to times the 4 by 5. And whatever you do to the bottom, you've got to do to the top, so times that by 5 as well, which will be 15. And for 2 fifths, we'll get that bottom to 20. So we times that by 4, and so we've got times the top by 4 as well, to make it 8. So it's going to be 15 over 20 plus 8 over 20. So we need to add the uh, numerators. So it would be 15 plus 8, which is going to be 23 over 20. Now that is a top-heavy fraction. So we can rewrite that as 1 and 3 twentieths. And we can add the 4 and the 1 together to make 5 and 3 twentieths. So the answer is 5 and 3 twentieths. 
there's a very specific way to draw a perpendicular from a line. What you do is you get a pair of compasses and measure roughly three quarters of the way between A and B and draw a, an arc from point A and we're going to draw an arc from point B and you can see that the two arcs intersect here and here so what we're going to do is just draw a straight line that join up where they intersect. Leave your um, workings out, your arcs, on the page when you do this to make sure you get full marks. We're going to start by looking at the numerator and the denominator separately. So looking at the numerator first, we've got 9 to the power of 16 times 9 to the power of 46. Now, when you have um, two powers of the same base, so they're both 9, base 9, but base is the big number, then what you can do is you can add the indices. So we're going to do 16 plus 46, which is 62. So it's 9 to the power of 62. And looking at the denominator, well, you've got a, an, a power inside and outside the bracket. Whenever you have that, you can just multiply them. So it'd be 9 to the power of 40. Now, whenever you've got a division between two powers of the same base, which we have here, it's 9 to the power of 62 divided by 9 to the power of 40, we just take away the indices. So it would be 62 take away 40, which would be 9, 9 to the power of 22. So our answer is 9 to the power of 22. So when you read this question, the question is basically asking you to find the bearing of O from B. So the lifeboat is at B, so I'm going to draw a north line here. And to find a bearing, you start from the north line and you keep going um, clockwise. So we're going to look for this angle here. Now, this angle, which is given to us in the question, and this angle here, which I'm just going to call X, are going to be equal. So X is going to equal 135 degrees. And the reason for that is we've basically got, and I'm just going to draw a, or extend the north line down, because we've basically got a, a, well, we have a set of parallel lines here. And we have a set of Z angles, which we know is alternate angles. So the reason for that is it's alternate angles. And always show the reasons to the examiner. Okay, and so to find out what the bearing is, so the bearing um, of O from B, it's just going to be 360 take away 135. And the reason for that is angles on a point of run out of space. Okay, so we're going to do 360, take away 135, which is 225. And so our answer is 225. So we can write this as a fraction. So it would be 2.84 times 10 to the power of 11 over 4 times 10 to the power of minus 2. What we can do is split this up into two fractions, so 2.84 over 4 times 10 to the power of 11 over 10 to the power of 2, or minus 2. Okay, so we're going to start by doing 2.84 divided by 4. So we're going to just do the bus stop method, so 4 on the outside, and we've got 2.84 on the inside. 4s into 2 don't go. So carry the 2 across, 4s into 28 go 7, and 4s into 4 go 1. So it's going to be 0 0.71 times, and then the rules of indices say that if you divide um, two um, powers of the same base, they're both 10, um, then you just take away the power. So it's 11 take away minus 2. Now the two minuses, the two takeaways, actually convert to a plus, so it would be 11 plus 2 which would be 13, so it would be 10 to the power of 13. Now we've got a bit of a problem here, because standard form must have a number between um, 1 and 10, and not including 10, um, at this position here, and this is obviously less than 1. 
so we need to convert this into standard form. So what we can do is just write the number out again. So I'm going to write this as an actual number. So it's 10 to the power of 13, so it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Fill in the zeros. So it would be 7, 1 and all those zeros. And then I'm going to put it back into standard form. Now, the decimal point will need to be here to make it 7.1. So it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it's going to be 7.1 times 10 to the power of 12. Now, with a bit of practice, you don't need to write out the whole number. You'll be able to just know that if you convert that into 7.1, then you just need to take away 1 from the power. But if you're not sure, and it's not an unreasonable number, like 10 to the power of 105, then it's just worth sometimes just writing out the actual number and being 100% sure that you've got it the right way around. So the way this formula works is we have M, which is the final amount. Uh, the 2,000 here is our initial amount. The um, decimal in here is our multiplier and the power here is the amount of years. So the way multipliers work is they are the percentage divided by 100. So if we go the other way and times it by 100 to make it back into a percentage, it will be 102.9%. Now it says what is the interest rate of the bank? Well the interest rate is always going to be 100% well, this 102.9% is 100% plus the interest rate, which will equal the 102.9%. So the interest rate is going to be the 2.9%. You always start off with 100%. So if I put uh, a £5 into my bank, I've got 100% of that £5, and then the interest rate is on top of that 100%. So our answer here will be 2.9%. There are a few different ways you could answer this question. I'm going to do it with a tree diagram, but you didn't need to draw a tree diagram to answer this question. So we've got our first tree, which is our first bus. And the choices are male and female. And we've got our second kind of branch, I suppose. And it's still male and female. And this is our second bus. So the property of male on a first bus is 9 over 15. And therefore the property of female is 1 minus 9 over 15, which would be 6 over 15. Male on the second bus is 7 over 15. And so female would be 8 over 15, because they need to add up to 1. And it's uh, independent, so these will be the same. And the question is basically asking what is the probability that both will be female. So to have both female, we need to have gone down this line at the start and then this line again. Okay, so looking at the fractions along the way, it's 6 over 15 and 8 over 15. The word and in probability means times. So whenever you're finding the probability of getting to an outcome, so this outcome would be FF because they're both female, you are multiplying the fractions that you go across. So it would be 6 over 15 times 8 over 15. So 6 times 8 is 48. And times the bottoms, uh, 15 times 15 is 225. Now you can actually cancel that down. Um, so what you can do is you can divide top and bottom by 4. And that will give you uh, 16, uh, is it 4? No, you can times top and bottom by 3. And that will be 16 over 75. So either 48 over 225 or 16 over 75. So to answer this question, you need to just know the answer off by heart. There is a diagram that can help us actually get there. And if we just draw a right angle triangle, 
and put the length as 1. Not right angle here. We can use Pythagoras, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, to work out the fact that this is going to be root 2. And because it's an isosceles triangle, this angle here is going to be 45 degrees. And same with the bottom right one, but we're not interested in that. When we label it with our marked angle here, we've got the adjacent is here and the hypotenuse is here. Now we know from um, trigonometry that cos x equals a over h. The angle is going to be cos 45 and a is going to be 1 and h is going to be root 2. Now, this is a bit of a, a strange one with 1 over root 2 because we need to actually be able to rationalise the denominator. And basically what that means, if you haven't done surds yet or you aren't doing surds, is you times tombon by root 2. And so we end up with root 2 over 2. So if you ever see 1 over root 2 is absolutely fine as an answer, but if you ever see the answer as root 2 over 2, the two are actually exactly the same. So writing 1 over root 2 is fine, or writing root 2 over 2 is also correct. I'm going to do just a quick multiplication grid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the 2x plus 3 at the top, so 2x and then plus 3, and then 3x minus 11 down the side. Multiply them out, 3 times 2 is 6, so that would be 6x squared. 3 times 3 is 9, so that would be 9x. Uh, minus 11 times positive 2 would be minus 22x. And then minus 11 times positive 3 would be minus 33. Get them all together, so we've got 6x squared plus 9x, because that is a positive. Minus 22x minus 33. And we can see the, here that the plus 9x and the minus 22x are like terms. So we can add them together to make minus 13x. And that's our answer. So our answer is 6x squared minus 13x minus 33. So when we find the mean of something, we add the elements together and we divide them by the amount of elements. So here we've got three elements. So what we're going to do is add these together and then divide by 3. Now the problem is that the um, denominators are not the same, so we can't add them yet, um, but they're all factors of 45. So we're going to times top and bottom of the first one by 9, so we end up with 9k over 45. We're going to times top and bottom by 3, and so it would be 3 brackets k plus 1 over 45. And the last one is over 45, so we don't need to do anything for that. Then we can just add the numerators together. And I'm just going to expand the bracket here. So it's 3k plus 3 plus k plus 4. And then all of that over 45. And then we're going to do 9k plus 3k plus k, which is going to be 13k. And then 3 plus 4, which is just 7 over 45. So the sum of them is 13k plus 7 over 45. So to work out the um, mean, we need to divide it by 3. But instead of writing divide by 3, we know KFC, keep flip change. If you have a division, you keep the first fraction, you change the divide into a times, and you flip the second fraction. So a different and easier way of writing that is times one third. So here we just keep the uh, numerator the same because we're timesing it by 1. And then the bottom we just times by the 3, which would be 135. So our answer is 13k plus 7 over 135. A box plot starts with the lowest value. Then it goes to the um, lower quartile. So we have the lowest value, then the lower quartile. And then we have the medium, then the upper quartile, and then the highest value. So lowest value is at 1 on this one. And normally we just put a little kind of line at the end here. So we're going to put a line at 1. And I'm just going to put that line there. Ooh, a little bit further to the right. 
there we go. And our lower quartile is nine, which is kind of where the box starts. So we're just gonna start box there. We're just gonna connect these up, there we go. And our median is 11, so we're just gonna show that. Quite a thin box plot so far. Now it says the interquartile range is five. Now the interquartile range is the distance here. So that's five. So it's going to be five more than the lower quartile. If the lower quartile is at nine, it would be nine plus five, which will be 14. So if we get our line at 14, and then complete our, our box plot, here we go. Now the range is the total distance of, or the total width of our box plot, so that's 17. So that's going to be 17 higher than the lowest value. Now the lowest value is one, so one plus 17 is gonna be 18. So I'm just gonna, there we are. And we're gonna have that at 18. And again, I'm just gonna put a line there. So we're gonna go through one way in which you can do this question. With um, circle theorems, often there are multiple different approaches. And so if you do a slightly different method, but you've written down all the working and you're happy with it and you get the same answer, it's probably fine. Um, just don't forget with these, always, always show every step of your working out because normally, say there's three marks for this question, one will be for the answer and two will be for the working out. So the first thing I notice with this um, question is that we have a lovely triangle coming off a tangent. And whenever we have that, the angle on the outside here is equal to the angle on the opposite side of the triangle. So this is going to be 44 here. I'm just going to remove all of that. And so this is going to be 44 degrees here. So angle B, F, D equals 44 degrees and the reason you need to give is the alternate segment theorem and you have to use those words otherwise you won't get the marks now next I notice that we've got a set of parallel lines here and we've got a line going through them and so the 44 degrees there is going to be equal to this one here. And so this is going to be 44 degrees. So we say angle um, F D E equals 44 degrees. And the reason this time is alternate angles, we'll put the E in, angles. And again, you have to use the word alternate. Okay, uh, next thing I notice is that um, we have uh, an isosceles triangle here, here, and here. And the bottom two angles in isosceles, assuming that it's upright, are always equal. So this is going to be 44 degrees here. So angle um, E, F, D is also 44 degrees. And again, we have to just say that it's an isosceles triangle. Okay, just highlight the fact it's an isosceles triangle. Okay, uh, next thing we're going to work out is this one here. And it's just angles in a triangle. So angle F E D is going to be 180 take away the 44 plus the 44. And the reason is um, angles in a triangle, add up to 180 degrees. And so we have 180 take away the 44 plus the 44 is 92, 92 degrees. And finally, <laughs> took us a while to get there, but finally we can work out what this angle is because in total, all four corners of this quadrilateral here are touching the circle so it's a cyclic quadrilateral and so angle uh, what's it called in the question angle FBD 
is going to equal 180 take away 92. And again, we have to show the reason of the fact it's a cyclic quadrilateral. And so 180 take away 92 is going to be 88 degrees. So our answer will be 88 degrees. When we add fractions or integers and fractions, we need the denominators of the fractions to be the same. And when we've got an integer, we just convert it to a fraction. And here we've got 9k, and we need to convert that to a fraction that is over k plus 9. And the way we do that is we get the 9k and we times it by k plus 9 over k plus 9. And effectively, k plus 9 over k plus 9 is just 1. So we're doing 9k times 1. So we're keeping it the same. We're keeping it as 9k. So what we do um, when we times a, in, or a, a 9k or a term by a fraction is we times the top, the numerator of the fraction. So it's going to be 9k brackets k plus 9 and all of that over k plus 9. Expanding the brackets we get 9k squared plus 81k over k plus 9. And so what I'm going to do is just feed that back in here. And so we've got 9k squared plus 81k over k plus 9 which is just that 9k bit, plus 11 over k plus 9. And whenever we're in this situation here, we just add the numerators. So it's going to be 9k squared plus 81k plus 11, and all of that over k plus 9. And that will be our answer. So let's put that in our answer field. The way we expand these thirds um, with the two brackets is very similar to the way we expand with quadratics. And so you may choose a different method for expanding. I'm just going to use the um, grid method. And what we do is we put the first bracket at the top, so it's going to be 5 and then minus root 2, and second bracket down the side, so 6 and minus root 2. We just multiply them out, so 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times minus root 2 is just going to be minus 6 root 2. Uh, 5 times minus root 2 is just going to be minus 5 root 2. And now we've got two minuses, which will make a plus, and root 2 times root 2 is just 2, because root 2 times root 2, well, you can multiply the um, thirds together, so that would be root 4 and root 4 is just 2. Okay, so now we've got to simplify this. Well, these two add together to make 32. And these two here add together, and so that would be minus 11 root 2. So comparing it to the a minus b root 2, a is going to be 32, and b is going to be well, I mean, it's tempting to say minus 11, but there's actually a minus before the B here, so it's just going to be 11. So I'm going to, first of all, just draw out the diagram a bit bigger, just so we've got a bit more space. And we're looking at going from B to M, and M is about here. Now, the first thing to notice with M, and I'm just going to quickly label the other parts on, is that the ratio of a to m is 1 and m to c is 4. So the ratio is 1 to 4 between the two. And what is really helpful sometimes is just to label in the kind of section. So if a to m is one section, we've got four of the sections from m to c. So just put little notches there to show the four sections. And we can see straight away that a to m is one-fifth of that distance. That's why it's a nice, easy way to show that a to m is one-fifth of that distance. Let's just put a nicer 5. There we go. And so we're looking at going from b to m, but we can't go directly from b to m. We've got to go from b to a to m, and that's going to be the direction of travel. 
Now, we don't know the name of the road um, between A and M. In fact, we don't know the name of the road between A and C. We've got to first of all work out what that's called. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from A to C by going down here and then up here. So we can find out A to C is going to be going backwards down A, then up B. Now A to M is going to be one-fifth of A to C. If A to C is minus A plus B, that means A to M is going to be minus one-fifth A plus one-fifth B. Now we're asked for um, the vector B to M and we know that that's going to be B to A plus A to M. We know B to A because it's labelled, it's just A. And we know A to M because we've worked it out down here. And it should be minus, let's get rid of that, because we know it's going to be minus one-fifth A plus one-fifth B. And so A minus one-fifth A is going to be four-fifths A. And then we've got the one-fifth B. So it's going to be four-fifths A plus one-fifth B. When you have a minus in the, um, in the brackets, in the function, you're going to reflect it in the y-axis. So we're going to have to reflect this in the y-axis. So we need some kind of understanding of what the sine wave does before um, it gets to zero, zero. And it starts by going up. So when we go backwards, it actually goes to minus one at 90. And then it will go back up, or at minus 90, I should say, then go back up to zero at minus 180. So what our graph is going to do, because it's reflecting in the y-axis, our graph is going to go down to 90, uh, go down to minus 1 at 90. Now a sine graph normally goes up, but this is going to go down. And actually it's going to look very similar to if it had reflected in the x-axis, but that is not what's happened. It has reflected in the y-axis, it just happens to be identical to if it had um, reflected in the y, uh, in the x-axis. So it's going to go down to n uh, minus 1 at 90, back up to 0 at 180, and then just keep going with its cycle. That's not great, we need to cross the coordinates, but as always make sure you have nice smooth u-shapes at the bottoms and the tops and that's more than good enough to get the marks. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site. OnMath is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions, and mini-mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing.